talk about the mystery charts and methodology in action. We have a mystery chart reveal this week. This was last week's mystery chart, and it is ZK. As I said last week, it took off sharply. Also, it's a, it's an IPO. It has a cup and handle look to it. And this is uh, hopefully, I don't know, I just said hope, a word you should never use in trading, but hopefully this will turn into a great IPO example, and we could talk about this one too. Sometimes IPOs come public and get ahead of themselves, and that's exactly what this one did. And our unwritten rule, actually our written rule, is to not buy an IPO till at least you have five days of trading. And you might go long on the close of the fifth day, and I'll show you that in just one second. But this took off nicely. And it's made a cup and handle pattern, and also it's a pullback. It's a Landry Light pullback, too, because you had Landry Light, and then it pulls back to the exponential moving average. Entry was there, the stop was there, and the initial profit target is up here. And I'm going to use the word hope again, but hopefully it'll hit that IPT, which is in between where it is now and the old highs. So we'll see what happens there. Also, as IPOs, and I'm going to beat the dead horse a bit on this in a minute but as ipos make new closing highs it's usually a bullish thing for them because everybody who owns the ipo is happy now that unfortunately doesn't always work and i'll show you where it failed miserably in a second just to show you the good and the bad all right follow up on the mystery chart it's clov and that's the original recommendation it was first recommended on august 28 2024 2000 shares per 100k and it was nice uptrend and one thing i was noticing as i'm going live is notice that we didn't have any downside landry light this whole time landry light is just lows greater than the moving average in this case they use a 30 ema which has become in more recent times my favorite ema i know you know a part of me <laughs> but i think this is kind of cool and maybe fodder for some research when you stay green even if you come down and touch the moving average which is fine which actually in some cases sets up the stock and in this case was the Landry Light pullback. The other thing, as I said last week or week before, is notice that it accelerated higher. And the other thing, <laughs> it's like last week at Bandcamp, in general, it tends to persist higher for the most part. And this nice little rip higher it made here was on acceleration of trend. It was also very persistent. It pulled back, my line's a little off there, but you get the idea. Notice that the Landry Light went back down to zero. Entry was here, stop was here, IPT was here. Now, one thing I was, I've been showing with trend following is there's a lot of ups and downs. And sometimes it's hard to hang on through them. And hopefully with the hybrid, is it word again? But uh, <laughs> hopefully with the, hey, Peter, good to see you. Uh, hopefully with the hybrid money management system, by banking the par partial profits, we can mitigate those drawdowns some. And on outright losses, we're only risking 2%. Boring overnight gaps, which I got whacked on one. I'll show you in just one second. You tell them kind of pissed. But anyway, it hit the IPT. So at the IPT, you're up 2,000. You bank 1,000 or half the position, and you bring that stop up to break even. Now, I'm going kind of quickly because we've gone through this example the past couple of weeks. But at that peak right there, you had $1,000 plus another 1,700 in open profit, 1,710. So that was 3,710. Unfortunately, it's drawn down since and here's today's spreadsheet of the open portfolio and this is the model portfolio based on 100k account i do take trades in this exact number in one account the exact number of shares and i also will take these trades in other accounts too but i do try to keep a model going so i can show you the actual trade i think i showed you the actual trade here a few weeks back and you can get the archives on my website and on youtube.com slash Dave Landry. But anyway, since then you can see we're only up 790 on the second low. So that is a pretty big swing, but it's a much smaller swing had we not taken partial profits. Now, if you go in with 2% on 100K, okay, that's $2,000 just stopped out. And especially with a lower price issue like this, once you get the initial profit target, you still have quite a few shares on and if this thing really takes off, if this turns into the mother of all bottoms, uh, longer term, this stock is bottomed out, then it could be worth a lot, even though you only have half the shares off. But if you get stopped out, so what? At least you made a little bit of money, barring overnight gaps.
I mentioned this one earlier in Facebook, so I could talk about it tonight. I try not to talk about anything in the webinar that I haven't mentioned. It's been a long day <laughs> that I haven't mentioned before. So I try to show things, uh, at least like in a webinar, the mystery chart, I'll show that ahead of time. And that's that usually comes, or probably all the time, comes directly from my trading service. You can get the archives at DaveLiner.com slash archives, and I'll make sure those are fresh on Friday, October 25th. By the way, next week's Halloween. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a show or not, so uh, stay tuned to that. Probably won't do a show. So the intro is here. With crypto, unlike other my other trading, sans IPOs, I will buy breakouts and IPOs, and we'll talk about that in a lot of detail in just a minute. But with crypto, especially when quite a few pairs are, are running, you could actually buy the ones that are making new highs, especially if they're doing it with a little bit of vigor like this. And it's kind of scary. You close your eyes and buy. And don't bet the form on this. I've got a really small, I, I, well, I actually have three accounts, but they're really, really, really small. And I'm just having fun with it. And I want to see if I can parlay these accounts. And I also want to see, as I've been saying lately, when I profit from these shit coins, these altcoins, these tokens, these meme coins, and things of that nature, I want to see if I could just peel off a small amount, one at the IPT and sometimes on a spike higher, and just put it into Bitcoin. So it's kind of like my shit coin to Bitcoin thing. Now I'm I'm hodling the Bitcoin, but there's not a lot of it. It's adding up. It's a few thousand dollars that have that have done collected in doing this. And as I say each week, if that becomes a real dollar figure, then I will probably put a little money management in it. But for now, I'm just seeing if I could make money in these altcoins and then turn around and put a little bit into Bitcoin, kind of mine off a little bit, so to speak. And by the way, I know it's a little uh, crass to call them shit coins, but that reminds me that these things are for trading, okay? They're like sardines, right? Like the old, we'll get to that in just one second, but the sardine story where the people were at the end of the war and they were trading sardines and sardines were just getting astronomically high and some guy bought the high tick and he goes home with the sardines and decides to open them up and eat lunch and they're rotten. And he goes, find a guy that sold them to him and said, hey, you sold me some rotten sardines. And the guy said, you silly fool, those sardines are for trading, not eating. So IPOs, stocks, crypto shit coins any financial market from my perspective and it should be from your perspective is for trading not eating i'm going to breeze through this tfm 10 percent system i know i say this every week but let me try to get through as quickly as possible here's some bands that i set up the 10 percent line is the only line that is that required for the system that in the 50 simple moving average and 10% line is just 10% below the 50 week closing high. And my thinking is if the a market is to go to zero or lose half of its value, it's gonna lose 10% of its value first, kind of technical analysis 101. And the 5% band came from Jeff, who is usually here on Thursdays, I think he's here tonight, and he likes to get out when the market slides 5%, and that's that's fine. He's going to get out a little early, like in this case here, he'd have gotten out here as opposed to my sell signal, which was here, so he'd save some money on that one. But every now and then, like right here, he might get shaken out, and that's called a whipsaw. If you're a good trader, then you could just get right back in, and you don't care. Anyway, that's the rules. You just have to be within 10% of the 50-week closing high and above the 50-week simple moving average. And a sell signal is when you close below the 10% line, okay, and the 50-week simple moving average. Now, again, this is a weekly chart. Now, the buy, uh, the buy is a little more stringent. You need two bars of Landry lights, and you go long on the close. Now, when I designed this, I was using stock charts, S&P 500, for my walkthrough, and I went back about 100 years, I think, or so. I have a spreadsheet on this that I occasionally show, and maybe, maybe next week I'll dust it off, or a week after. But anyway, going back 100 years, I didn't think about, in, in the testing, I didn't think of it, the point I'm trying to get to, I'm kind of got three different thoughts in my head, but 
one of the, the main point I'm trying to get to is this is on a calendar basis. So you would get out on a on a Friday when this occurs, and that's something I didn't really think about. That maybe in a week you could have something here, but for now, and the way I've been following this and tracking it is on a Friday, so it's a weekly closing charts and not a rolling closing chart or rolling weekly chart, I should say. Anyway, the sell again, you close below 50 week moving average and you close 10% or more away from the 50 week closing high. Notice that that moving average is catching up to the 10% line. Once or if the moving average surpasses the 10% line, then the 10% line is your sell signal because it'll be below both the 50 and the 10% line. Anyway, sell's right there. So it's got a ways to go to get to a sell especially since we just hit new highs. Now, last week I said, notice that the zones are shifting higher because the market made last week new 52-week highs. Unfortunately, so far this week, and I know the week ain't over yet, but so far this week it has not. So you notice that the zone began to flatten out. So you can see it's going sideways in here for one week. So we'll see what happens. Now, here's the cues. Like I said, I bought 100 shares for S&Gs. Didn't think it would turn into anything. And fortunately, it did. And right now, you can see, let me just back this out a second. The 10% zone and the 50 simple moving average are right around the same level. So your sell signal, again, would be right there. Now, notice here that it hasn't made new highs in a while, new closing high that is. So the zone has stayed flat in here. I think it has some arrows that are coming up. Anyway, I marked to market this. So this silly little trade, 100 shares is worth 17,283, but the drawdowns have been fairly steep as I've been saying quite a bit. So that was like a $4,400 drawdown, almost $5,000 or $4,500. And uh, that was like 60 or 70% of the open gain so that one was a little painful and technically on a trigger a sell trigger it could have actually went negative after being up whatever it was five grand or whatever it was there so here's another drawdown 3600 this one kind of hurt eight thousand dollars and again when i put this on i'm like who cares 100 shares and then uh i was to my surprise and i'm happy believe me it actually turned into some real money and i'm going to say hope again hopefully we'll bang out some new highs they'll stop some move up and we'll continue to trend follow this for a long 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 time notice like i said in the p's a little more prevalent here let's see we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen sixteen weeks so four months of sideways action so the zones are not going to change until and unless we bang out some new highs, but we're not that far away. But obviously, you still have to get there. So Ledger 100, just real quick, proof of concept. This is not actually traded, although someday I might throw some money at it. And, and the, the thing about it is when conditions are halfway decent like they are now, I know they're mixed, but they're decent enough to where you've got enough momentum still out there. This thing pretty much prints money. When the market gets choppy, it does not. But when the market gets choppy, you get fewer and fewer setups. And I treat cash as an asset class. So some of these slots or nearly all of these slots might end up in cash. So it'll be fun to to, to run this through. I know you want to party with me. <laughs> it'll be fun to run this through a couple of cycles and see what happens. And hopefully we don't have a down cycle for a while. But anyway, the point is that they're all bought at new highs. And I'm not saying rush out and buy new highs. But if you were going to buy a basket of stocks or if you're buying IPOs or with a pattern with the IPOs or if you're buying shit coins and the shit coins are all moving and so is Bitcoin, then by all means, it's OK to buy in a new highs. But it's a really cool thing. And you could see and one thing I pointed out over the prior weeks, this was bought here and then it immediately went into a drawdown. So even though everyone was bought at new highs. A lot of times, of course, they go straight into a drawdown. But these numbers here are pretty substantial. And you can see the tracking dates are only going back a couple of months. And this one's up 104%. And this is, I can't read what this is, but the great thing about a momentum list like this 
is you don't care what sectors they in or, or the stocks themselves for that matter. It, you're able to be a pure technician. And it's, I know it's, I'm a nerd, but it's, it's fun to run this. I really look forward to running this now. And uh, it's, it's, like I said, it's been a blast just going and finding those stocks. And it's really alerted me to things like utilities are becoming the new uh, semiconductors or momentum stocks or biotech, whatever you want to call them. So we could see some setups soon in utilities. REITs had a pretty good run for a while, though I've been pulling a lot of REITs out of this list. But the beauty of it, it does, it does help you to see where the money's flowing. So it's a great exercise, if I say so myself. Watch last week's webinar if you want the formula for that I use for that. That and 50-day historical volatility, which I should give you too. 